So continuing on the same theme, in industry-sponsored research, you have often the opportunity for the faculty member to be engaged as a consultant with the company, as well as being engaged as a contractual uh, mm -hmm. relationship with mm -hmm. the institution that they work for. And sometimes those two lines are very blurred, right. and, and right. we in the central offices don't always get to see that. Right. We can't always get the focus clear. What's the difference between the two? A, a faculty who was invited to be a consultant is usually someone who's sought after for their special advice, their special, their expertise in a particular area. That's usually an, a private arrangement between the faculty member and the external person who's hiring that person. Most institutions don't review these consulting agree, agreements. Some, I, I know I do not. And so. Washington does not either. Um, Many institutions, like WashU, though, um, provide language that they that help the faculty member, uh, as part of their negotiations, distinguish between their relationship as an employee of the university and their consulting activity. Um, I always advise our faculty to seek their own legal advice or before they sign those consulting agreements to make sure that their rights are well protected. Yeah, and generally the faculty members are working with the department heads, right, on the consulting, uh, at least that they're disclosing that they're having that relationship with that company. That's right. Most institutions have clearly defined consulting policies that explain when a faculty member can become a consultant, how much time they can spend on that, and usually there has to be some communication with the department head or their school dean, depending on how they're structured, to assure that that consulting arrangement is okay. Yeah. On the contracting side, there's, that's a different um, scenario. That's usually an, uh, an arrangement between a sponsor and the institution, um, where the faculty is probably going to provide a scope of work, help deliver the deliverables, perhaps be accountable for the finances and the oversight. And that's a negotiated agreement that becomes an, a formal written agreement between that sponsor and the, the particular institution. Usually, at least in our case, our sponsored research office is signing those contracts, and we always suggest to faculty, don't sign anything with the university name attached to it unless right. you seek advice from your um, institution so that they, we all know together as a partner what, the, what we are committing both the faculty member to do as well as the institution. So a faculty member will sign a consultant agreement as an independent contractor consultant, right. but you're not going to see the institutional signature on that. In the same vein, on a contract, the institution will sign, but the faculty member would rarely sign the contract. That's right. So, that's right. That's important to know. So that's consistent across the board we've seen that. So, yeah.